Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at how to go from vertex form to standard form. It's good to see the math involved in converting from one form of a quadratic to another. Uh, we're often going to have to do that to actually work with quadratics, especially if they're given in standard form. We're going to have to convert them to other forms to be able to work with them. So I'm going to show you how to do this way. Uh, and eventually we're going to look at standard form and how to go from standard form to what we call factored form. So it's just some mathematical practice to be able to do all that stuff. So um, what we need to do is realize that um, there's a part of this equation that actually looks like the lesson we had recently, uh, the previous lesson, on expanding uh, binomes. Binomes are uh, things inside of brackets that have two terms in them. So x plus 4 is called a binome because it's got two things in it. Now this binome is squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this x plus 4 squared off to the side and do some work with it. And then we'll come back and put it back into the equation. Uh, when, you, when you have a whole bunch of stuff to do inside of a, an expression like this um, that is going to take up a lot of time, you don't necessarily want to be carrying everything else around with it. So sometimes pulling it off to the side and doing the work and then bringing it back in, can it just makes things a little bit easier in my opinion. So what does x plus 4 squared mean? Now it does not mean x squared plus 4 squared. Okay, so if you were thinking that, please make sure to not ever do that. Because of the plus here, that is not how this works. What a square means is that there are two of those things multiplying each other. So you should always think back as to what is the basic idea of a power of two. A power of two means double, not double, sorry, two things that are exactly the same multiplying each other. Okay. Now this looks like what we were doing in the last lesson, where I taught you how to expand two brackets like this that are multiplying. And we had called that FOIL. Now FOIL is an acronym that means the two first things in the bracket are going to multiply each other. So we're going to have x times x, which is x squared. And then the O means both outer things in the brackets, which would be the X and the 4, are going to multiply each other. Now I like to just call this double distributivity, so the X is distributing to the X and the 4 in the second bracket. So X times 4 is plus 4X. And then the two inner things are going to multiply each other, the 4 and the X, which gives plus 4X again. And then the two last things in the bracket are going to multiply. So 4 times 4 is plus 16. And then we group up the two middle terms because those are like terms and they're adding together. So we're, in the, we're going to end up with what we call a trinomial. So x squared plus 8x plus 16. And now we're going to bring that back into the equation where it's supposed to be. So we have our 3. Our 3 is multiplying the entire trinomial. So we're going to write the x squared plus 8x plus 16 right here. And then we have the minus 7 still there. So all of this work I did off to the side, so I didn't have to do it down every line, carrying the 3 and carrying the negative 7 all the way down at the same time. So that's the nice thing about doing it off to the side. And I'm just going to put a line here to show that those are separate. Okay? So now we have to deal with this expression. So we're going to multiply this 3 into this bracket. So this is another distributivity uh, scenario here but it's just the coefficient of 3 that's multiplying everything that's inside that bracket because there are three of those brackets. So there's 3x squares, 3 8x's, and 3 16's. So we just have to expand that. So 3 times x squared is 3x squared 
3 times 8x is 24, oops, 24x. And 3 times 16, well, 3 times 10 is 30, 3 times 6 is 18, so that's 48. And then we've got the minus 7 that's still there, and we're going to have one more step where we combine those two terms, which are now like terms. So we've got 3x squared plus 24x plus 41, and that is our final answer. So we started with vertex form, and we end with standard form. are two different forms of the exact same equation. If you were to graph this equation, we can actually visualize the vertex form one because we know that the vertex is going to be at negative 4, negative 7, and it's going to be a smile shape that's narrow because of the a value. So negative 4, negative 7, somewhere over here, smile shape that's narrow. Okay, so that's, you can visualize what the parabola is going to look like from vertex form. And we can also write it in standard form, and if we did that on Desmos with the above one, we'd get the exact same parabola. Now, a little side note here. It's interesting that this is called the standard form, because the standard form is actually the uh, least useful form. You almost always have to convert it into another form. Now, it's, it's least useful to graph, but often when you're doing algebra, this is the best form to, to carry around um, because it's separated all of the different things. Um, but I don't want to get into that too much. Uh, it is called the standard and that's the form you're going to see the most often. So let's do a couple more examples. So here's another one. Let's convert this to standard form. So just like before, I'm going to take the x minus 2 off to the side, x minus 2 squared off to the side, which just means x minus 2 times x minus 2. I'm going to FOIL that, so the first things are going to multiply, the outside things are going to multiply, or the outer things, the inner things are going to multiply, and the two last things are going to multiply. So we've got x squared minus 2x, minus 2x, plus 4. So x times x is x squared, x times minus 2 is minus 2x, minus 2 times x is minus 2x, minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. So all I did was follow those arrows to be able to multiply all that, and now just as before, those two middle terms are going to join up. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4, and now we're going to put that back into the original equation. So we end up with y is equal to minus 5 times, open a big bracket, put that trinomial in there, x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then the minus 9 at the end. And now we're going to distribute the minus 5 into the trinomial. So minus 5 times x squared is minus 5x squared, minus 5 times negative 4x is uh, plus 20x and minus 5 times plus 4 is minus 20 and then we have the minus 9 still there and now I'm going to combine these two as like terms so our final answer is negative 5x squared plus 20x minus 29 and that is our standard form so I'm going to show one more example. Now this example is still a vertex form quadratic, but as we've seen with transformations, sometimes some of the transformations could be missing. So if the uh, plus k is missing over here, this, this is still a vertex form. So I can still ask you to transform it into a standard form. So we're going to take the x plus 7 squared off to the side. And I know now that it's just x plus 7 times x plus 7, so I'm not going to write the first part. I'm going to do my double distributivity. So x times x is x squared. x times 7 is plus 7x. 7 times x is plus 7x. 7 times 7 is plus 49. 
so that becomes x squared plus 14 squared, uh, 14 x, sorry, plus 49. It's so funny when you're doing math how you can be thinking something and you say something completely different because you were looking at a previous statement or you're expecting the last one. Anyway, sorry about that. And now we're going to take that trinomial and put it back into the original equation. So the 2 is still there. We're going to open up our big bracket and put x squared plus 14x plus 49 in there. And now we've got 2x squared plus 28x. Uh, 49 times 2 is 80 plus 18, which is 98. And that is our final answer. So just to show you, I said I had one more example, but what if I had given you this as your vertex form? That is a vertex form equation as well. Well, the funny thing is, is this one is already in standard form because there's nothing you can do. It isn't a trinomial, but it's not just trinomials that are standard form. You can have binomials that are standard form as well. This is a quadratic that can be considered both vertex form and standard form. Uh, because the bracket is missing beside the x, that means there's no left or right transformation. Uh, therefore, we don't have to do the x plus something squared or uh, x minus something squared like we were doing in the previous examples. This one is already both in vertex form and standard form. And uh, that's going to be the end of today's lesson. It's not a very long lesson today. Um, you're going to be getting some practice on uh, this work. So um, hopefully you understood it. If you need any help, let me know and have yourselves a great day.